Good morning, everyone. It's good to see everyone out uh, this morning. I know it's cold, a lot of stuff floating around out there, so appreciate you being here this morning. We are midway through lesson number eight, I think. Uh, I choose to raise children, um, to raise kids to serve the Lord. <clears throat> Hopefully we'll get to finish that today and maybe jump into lesson nine, I choose to serve. Um, we might even finish this book before the course up. Uh, we didn't think we were going to get there at the beginning, but uh, we, could, we could get there, uh, so we'll see. Uh, before we begin, uh, ask Derek Samala, if he would, to lead us in a word of prayer. Amen. Thank you. Uh, we're talking about choices. This quarter have, have been all, all quarter, continuing that theme. Um, we got to this, this point in the lesson about the, the three-peat uh, challenge of Moses in Deuteronomy 6, uh, a hundred-year challenge that God has given to, to Moses to give to the children of Israel. Um, if you want to turn to Deuteronomy 6, we'll be spending a lot of, a lot of time there for the next few, uh, few moments. <laughs> <clears throat> what does what does Moses instruct the children of, of Israel to do in Deuteronomy six verse two? Yeah, on and yes, yes, a generational thing. On and on and on and on and on. Those are the those are the things that he he told them to do in Deuteronomy uh, six verse. Verse two, keep going, keep this, keep this moving. Um, and also th through four, verse six, uh, uh, verses we're all really familiar with. You shall love the Lord with all, um, here is with the Lord of God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your might. And these words that I command you shall be on your heart. It, that proved to be a challenge to them. I think we discussed that a little bit uh, as we, we were in class. Um, can I ask something a little different than what I'm, I'm asking now? Does, does, does that, is that a challenge for us to uh, love God with all our heart and our soul and our, our mind, give him our everything? And there's lots of things that are in the way of, of that. Um, we're all really, really busy. We're all distracted. We're all kind of, sometimes we're burdened or we're, we're tired emotionally or physically. And I added this one, uh, concerned about the uncertainties of, of the future. And as we think about them, they were, they were getting ready to go into the, to the land of, of Canaan. So there's a lot of uncertainties they're going to be facing, they were going to be facing as well. So, um, <clears throat> and I asked this, would, we, would they be any busy, would we be any busier than those folks? And I think we discovered, or we talked about that, we probably aren't. Um, we don't have to do the things that they do to get to, uh, our food and, and things like that, things are pretty readily available for us. But there probably was less distraction, uh, maybe, during this time frame. Um, Moses instructs them to uh, <clears throat> Deuteronomy 7, verse 9. What does he instruct them to do there? Someone wants to read that. Deuteronomy 6, 7, verse 9. <clears throat> You shall teach them diligently to your sons. You shall talk of them when you sit in your house and when you walk by the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. You shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as frontals on your forehead. You shall write them on the doorposts of your house and on your gates. So what's this, what's this image of? Um, like what, what method of teaching does this remind you of? <clears throat> it's all the time teaching. It's, it's a That's right. It's a repetitive thing, right? It's not a one-shot deal. It's constant. Um, 
the more you, you rep an action, uh, the more you become, you commit it to memory. And I botched this Bruce Lee quote at the beginning of the quarter, and when I get it right this time, I got it on the board. I fear not the man who's practiced 10,000 kicks once, but I fear the man who's practiced one kick 10,000 times. Bruce Lee. <clears throat> uh, by doing repetitive, by repetitively doing this with our children, um, do we gain some benefit from that as well? Yeah, 100%. A person that has repetitively practiced patience and, and, and love, and that, that can be a benefit to, to anyone out there in, in the world. Any, any thoughts or comments or things you'd like to add to that? <clears throat> As we move on, where are these teachings supposed to take place? So that, what Cal just read to us there. Every aspect, every aspect of our lives. Do we, do we sit in our homes? <laughs> yeah, I do a lot of sitting in, in my home, uh, more than I should. Um, <clears throat> so we sit down, we have meals together. Um, sometimes it's hard to disconnect from the electronics that we have, but there's an opportunity there for us to, to teach the kids. Uh, we can set time aside to do this. Um, when you, when you walk, it says when you walk, by the way, we, we don't walk a whole lot as much as they did. We travel, so there are opportunities where we can uh, do car games, uh, do some, some Bible memory or, or things like that. When, when uh, we were in Yellowstone, we had some questions that for, for camp that Luke was, was going on, and we'd all, we'd all go around the... The, the car together, seven of us in one van. It was, it was quite tight, so there's lots of things we had to talk about. So we all, I think we all gained a lot of knowledge from, from that time. <clears throat> when we rise, when we sleep, um, remind them of who they are. Um, Jim Hardy, this, this left an impression on me. Jim Hardy gave, gave this lesson one time, and he said to his kids before they would go to school every morning, he would tell them, remember who you are. I'm sure other people do that as well, but he... That sticks out to me for what he did. <clears throat> Any thoughts? Are kids inquisitive? <laughs> yes, they are, aren't they? They ask a lot of questions. They're very, 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 very curious. So <clears throat> there's going to be a time when, when, when kids are going to ask us why. Mom, dad. Grandma, grandpa, great-grandma, great-grandpa, why are we doing this? Why do we worship? Why do we obey? Why do we go to Bible studies? Why do we do good to others? Why do we keep God's laws? What's our response? Verse 21 25 gives us a, an, in, a, a, an insight there. If someone wants to read that. <clears throat> Yes, please. That's 6, 21 through 25. Thank you. So, when we're asked these questions, why, what do we say? What do we teach? He's commanded us to? Yeah, no, you're right. He's commanded us to? What's he done for us? What's he, what did he do for those people in that particular time frame? Where do you bring them out of? Yeah. Captivity. Mm-hmm. What did you say, Miss Carol? I'm sorry. 
out of bondage. Yeah, out of bondage, captivity, all these signs and wonders. His, his grace, his mercy. For us today, we, we teach about the, uh, the cross and what it means to us. We teach about the hope of eternity, what God continues to do for us. We talk of his faithfulness in verses 23 and 24. God has done what he promised. And he said to Abraham, he's going to do this, and he's continuing. He's, pr- he's keeping that promise. God always does what he says. So we need to, so what we read in God's word is something we can depend on for, for our lives. He gives us, God gives us hope. He gives us help. He gives us all that we need. He's faithful to do this. And we teach God's commands are for our good. He commanded us so we he kept them alive, and, and his commandments are good, good for us. <clears throat> yes? I think it's important for us to make sure that we are using the Bible verses and not just, this is what we do, because then it becomes mom and dad's religion. Mm-hmm. Mom and dad told me, and then they don't know for themselves, and, you know, they're out in the world, and mom and dad told me, or even falling away because they think that's mom and dad's religion. Mm-hmm. They don't have the verses. Bible in their own knowledge. Very good. As we talked about at the beginning of this, God's word is, is we believe that it's, that's their authority. We need to back it up when we're teaching these things. This is why we do these things, because here's, here's why. It's because it says it in, in, this, in the verse there. So very good, because it's his, his law, not, not what we say. <clears throat> it's good. Anybody else? Show the chosen. I had the option to see any uh-huh. episodes. Um, there's a just the very first five minutes of, of that series it comes to mind as you're talking about this. A little girl comes to her dad and she's afraid, and he doesn't say, "I don't have to worry about anything. God's taking care of it." He doesn't say he's going to make everything all right. He tells her, "Remember the words of Yahweh." Mm-hmm. Speak the words of you know, speak the words of Advent, but he tells her to, to recall these words that he has taught her, and, and they they quote together Isaiah forty three one. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Mm-hmm. And you know, the show has got some great things in it, but but that has just really stood out to me um, throughout it. That that opening scene of a father and a child, how he comforts her. And I think it's really easy for us to, kind of like Jessica said, was tell you the reasons why we think Mm -hmm. you should do this. Tell you the reasons why we're confident. But they need to know, they need to know what God has said. And I, I concur with her point. Yeah. Remember the words of Yahweh. (laughs) <laughs> yeah, that, that is, that's our authority. God's our authority. So, uh, very good. This, this was obviously a challenge for the parents of that time frame. Um, and uh, we face it, too, um, when trying to consistently teach our, our kids about God. There's things that get in the way, like they would have faced similar things that they would have faced as well. There's there's, there's a balance of work and family. There's, there's negative media influences. There's, there's lack of communication. There's, there's financial pressures. There's lack of discipline. There's, we're busy, uh, anti-Christian culture, and, and, and many others that we, we face this, uh, that we face this day. But there are, there are challenges that we face um, as a, trying to raise a generation that loves, loves God. And, and Miss Judy brought this point up last, last time. Um, Everything's a little packaged, a little different, but it's the same, isn't it? Ecclesiastes 1.9, what has been is what will be, and what has done is what will be done. There's nothing new under the sun. It's the same old challenges. Maybe they're repackaged, and they're presented as new, but all, all things parents face in the Old Testament, the first century, we, we, will, we will face, and Lord willing, our kids will face, and their kids, and so on and so forth. And God asked them, the parents in Moses' day to be, be faithfully devoted and he certainly expects, expects that from, from us as well. You want to have anything they'd like to add to that? <clears throat> yes? Mm-hmm. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right. <laughs> yes. Yes. Don't be, sometimes we get a tendency to be their best friend. You know, sometimes we want to make them mad and, and realize that, that look, I'm, I'm doing this for your good. Um, Satan does fight for them. We need to fight harder um, and, and teach and encourage. So good, good thought. <clears throat> yes, please. Uh-huh. Yeah. Yeah. So the repetitiveness can sometimes just be that. What you're what you're saying it's just be that there's, there's no emotion attached to it. So, yeah, good point. We had to attach emotion to these scriptures and and and, st and still a desire to want to do God's will. Good. <clears throat> Anyone else? <clears throat> How many of you all realize how awesome grandkids were until you had them? I know we got some new grandparents in here, uh, probably really ecstatic about their, their grandkids, as most of you all are. Um, I can't fathom that idea right, right now. It's just uh, it's something that's kind of beyond, beyond me uh, right now. We're, we're doing our best to try to get the three that we have in our house uh, um, raised up. So... Uh, most of these folks probably didn't have the grandchildren in, uh, in, in Numbers 14, 29, uh, because they all perished in the wilderness. Uh, the author uh, says that most of these were been 59 years of age, so, so lots, of, lots of young families in this, this group here. Um, did they have an influence on the next generation? Sure they did. We know at least one of the 12 spies did, and the elders of that generation. We can clearly see the, the ripple effect that it caused. Uh, Judges 2, 6, and 7. If someone could uh, turn there and read that passage, please. <clears throat> Judges 2, 6, and 7. Thank you. Joshua not only influenced his family, he influenced his family for years later down the road and, and not and other people as well. So how can you, how can we have an influence on our family 100 years from today? Mm -hmm. Yeah.
Yeah, it's a, it's a pretty weighty matter. <clears throat> Someone else had something over here? I, I just want to say that I agree with you. Hmm? Right. I think there's two examples of the kind of passion for children, not necessarily always for the right thing. Mm -hmm. Our family, our, our, we're going to be exposed, I mean, <coughs> more exposure to our family than anybody else. So your example will, will pay dividends later. It, it's a ripple effect, right? What, you know, they'll, they'll harken back to things that we've done, stuff like that. So what we do today can cause a ripple effect um, many, many years down, down the road. Um, any thoughts about that? <clears throat> any other thing you'd like to add? How do we do this? <clears throat> Where do we begin? Ourselves. That's right. Um, the author points out that in Deuteronomy 6, 4 through 6, he uses words like you and your. Never made that connection before, but... We have to love God and put him first so we can teach it to other generations, to, to Miss Carol's point. Um, I found this quote. It said, the only person you can control is yourself. You alone have the power to choose how you feel, your attitude, your behavior, your response. Um, people say a lot of things. We say a lot of things. I say a lot of things. How are we walking? Are our actions backing up our speech, especially when we're around our, our, our families? Um, the author states that kids cannot handle hypocrisy. We will be found out. <laughs> um, we have to be people of the book. Moms, dads, cousins, um, aunts, uncles, grandpas, grandmas, great grandmas, grand great grandmas. Uh, we, had, we need to know the Bible and live it um, and, and be an example. Um, James 1, 22, be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving yourselves. Um, author states that you can't have it in your heart if you don't know it, and you can't pass it on to the next generation if we don't know it. Um, Luke is really into guns. Wants to hunt this and that and all that. Um, I don't know much about him. Um, we went to a range with Kyle. He can attest to that. <laughs> don't know a whole lot about guns. Because um, it's something my dad was not into. Quite frankly, he didn't have time. Because he was, he was busy working and just didn't, didn't make time for that. So um, it's hard for me to teach him something I don't know, but something I don't know myself. Can I learn? Of course. Of course I can learn. Um, when should I start? <laughs> now, right? Start now. <clears throat> start now. So s start with Luke. That's right. Learn with Luke. So maybe our Bible knowledge isn't where it needs to be right now. I know mine isn't. Um, there's lots. I'm a million miles away from where I need to be. Can I learn? Absolutely. When do I need to start? Now. Uh, we'll get into that a little bit on, on the next page. Um, this, this came up, and I, I add a little bit to, to what he, <coughs> he said in the book. Do our actions match our message? So the message being Romans 12, 16, live in harmony with one another. Do not be haughty, but associate with the lowly. Never be wise in your own sight. Action. <laughs> Lord, it's hard to be humble when you're perfect in every way. <laughs> that's, a, that's a song out, out there, but a um, little, little jest there. But that, that's, that's hard sometimes to let pride and ego and haughtiness get in the way of our messages that we're sending to, not just to our kids, but to everyone. Um, <clears throat> Ephesians 4, 29, let no corrupt talk come out of your mouths, but only such as what's good for building up, as if it's the occasion, and it may give grace to those who hear it. Action, arguing, complaining, negative or discouraging words, words that hurt or tear down, gossip, slander, Etc. cetera, uh, those, those things contradict the message that we're sending, and kids can, can see that. Message, 1 Corinthians 13, 4 through 7, <clears throat> love is patient and kind. Love is not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. Not insist in its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices 
with the truth. Love bears all things, leave all things, hopes all things, endures all things. Action. Impatient. Unkind. Envious. Boastful. Arrogant. Rude. My way or the highway. Irritable. Resentful. Rejoicing in wrongdoing. Doesn't like the truth. Etc. So, our actions need to, to match up with what we're saying out there. Author mentions also things, putting God first and missing action. The action, the message that we would be sending would be putting God first, but missing services for, for a hobby or, or speech should be seasoned with salt, but we're using profanity and we're, we're stealing and um, we're impure. Our actions need to match our message. <clears throat> Any, any thoughts or comments you want to add to, to that section? <laughs> See a sermon, then hear one. I like that. I don't think I've ever heard that before. See a sermon, then hear one. <laughs> okay. Yes, sir. <laughs> See a sermon. I like that. That's good. Uh, yeah. What you, how you walk is... Uh, the song that we sing, the world, the world's Bible. You know, what are they going to see when they see us? So, good. <clears throat> I'm not going to do interpretive dance. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> uh, I, I, you know, I think we focused, that, that phrase, hypocrisy, I think we focused on that, and the author focused on it, in ways where, you know, we tell our kids, you should treat people nice and yeah. they gossip about somebody. Right. Uh, and hopefully, those are, those are things that we would have recognize in our life, I, that shouldn't be. Sure. Uh, there are many things that we might be guilty of that aren't as maybe as obvious to us. Yeah. I think fear is a big one. Mm-hmm. And we, we spend so much time trying to convince our children they can trust in God and that He is bigger than, than all the problems that they may face. Uh, trying to teach them to to have a, a healthy prayer life, to, to communicate those fears to him. But then when things go off the rails in our lives, do we do we show that? Yeah. Or do we just kind of fall apart and get argumentative with, with each other, get very short with our spouses, get very short with our children? Uh, I think there's other ways that, that we can also, that we can show that hypocrisy that we maybe would miss yeah. because we might look at it and not recognize it as something like gossip. Right. That's really good. I, I didn't think about that point, but the things that people don't see, fear, guilt, you know, anxieties, and things like that, you know, those those can be hip, hip, hypocritical. Is that a word? Hypocritical as well. Hypocritical. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. I'm also high school. <laughs> uh, we, uh, yeah, so that's good. Good point. Any other thoughts? <clears throat> Speaking earlier about Israelites coming out of Egypt. Yes, sir. They were forgotten what all God had done for them. Uh-huh. If I recall, it wasn't just the song at all where he felt uh-huh. that Moses was up there talking to God. Mm-hmm. They did. Human nature seems to be to be contrary to God's word. Yeah. Uh, innately. Yeah. I want to do good. Human being normally. Yeah. Speaking of family, most parents are the most influential people on their children. Mm-hmm. And most of them follow whatever they were. More than likely, they're going to remain a Catholic. Yeah. Or other denomination. Right. Like somebody, oh, said, I'm a Baptist. My family goes back 400 years mm-hmm. to Baptist. I'm going to remain one. Yeah. No matter what I learn otherwise. Right. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you're certainly loyal to to family, and and that's that's tough. That's tough sledding. But the, you know, 
the, the person we should be loyal to is God, you know, we're search his, his scriptures out and, and go by his law. So, yeah, but it's, it's hard with those influences, you know, in, in our lives. <clears throat> but, you know, we all, we all can seek the truth and seek, seek God. And I think about those, those Israelites, and, and they were constantly, they, they wanted to go back to what, how things were. You know, they didn't want to move forward. You know, we, we were comfortable back here. The life was terrible, but we, that was what we knew. You know, we were comfortable right here. So sometimes getting out of that comfort zone and going forward in something we're not really sure what's going to happen is, is tough. <clears throat> yeah, I, I've definitely seen, as Wendell was talking about, I've seen people that have this mentality that I'm, this is how mom and dad and grandpa and grandma yep. were at that time. I, I don't know that that's quite as common today mm -hmm. as it used to be. And, and I, I blame it, not that it's a good thing or a bad thing, um, but our children are growing up being told that they need to make up their own minds on things, and they more or less are thrust into, you're the authority in your life. You can just, you can be what you want to be, do what you want to do, think what you want to think, it's, it's your truth. And because of that, a lot of people are growing up going, you know, it doesn't really matter what mom and dad thought on this. Mm -hmm. uh, and what Kim, I think, mentioned earlier about Satan battling for our kids, it's scary the way that he adapts uh -huh. to the changing society. And, and you know, we, we may have tried to see, see things in the past that we're not good. You know, we, we don't want to raise children that are just, I'm going to do what mom and dad did. We, we want to show them serve God. But today, trying to raise our kids, and you almost feel like you're saying, don't look at the world, look at me. Yeah. But I think going back to the idea of authority and teaching our kids what what is the standard of, of all truth and preparing them, equipping them to be able to not just not just know what's right, but be able to reason through it. Mm -hmm. Be able to, to, to hear somebody. I mean, there's my social media feeds are flooded with with arguments against Christianity and arguments against faith. Every day I have different videos and posts that pop up, people that do not believe in God and are, are trying to give their reason why. And it's not uncommon for me to be watching those going, wow, I, that, that's, that's pretty feels pretty damning. And, mm -hmm. and, but then as you really start to think about it and you kind of logically reason through it, you realize that this person has created some sort of straw man that they can very easily knock down. And it's because they knocked it down so easy that it seems real. And we can, think, we can see through that. Mm -hmm. We can see that and go, okay, you know, this, this person's making a, an argument against God because God gave us free will and they're an atheist and therefore God made them an atheist. So we can we can read them through that, but for somebody that hasn't been trained to mm -hmm. do that, been trained to think logically and reason through things, and unfortunately that's not a big part of our our education anymore. Yeah, um, it can be really hard, and those can seem very very convincing. So you know we need to teach our children the truth. We need to teach our children this is our standard of authority, but we need to teach them how to use it as well and how mm -hmm. to, to think slowly and methodically about. Yeah, very good. I, I was re yes, yes. Nope, go ahead. No, yes, yes, sir. What came to mind is obviously when
Yeah. Very good. Great. Fantastic points. I try to sum it all up, but I can't. <laughs> it's heavy. Yeah, it's 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 extremely heavy. Um, all of us. <laughs> yeah. It's it's a. Uh, it's a heavy, heavy subject for for all of us. Um, constant struggle, <clears throat> for sure. Very good point. There's always an opportunity. Uh, no matter if the chain's been broken, there's an opportunity to, to pick it back up and relink it. Um, that's a great point about guardrails. Um, people always think that God gives us these, these boundaries, you know, God's trying to boss me around or whatever. But to, to the point of Deuteronomy, these, these are for our good. You know, these are for our, us to keep us safe and, and keep our soul and keep us from, from something that's, that's going to be detrimental down the road. So... Great, great point. Thank you. <clears throat> Anyone else? Oh, wow. Well, I said we were going to get down with this book, man. <laughs> okay, start today. When's the best time to make any kind of change? <clears throat> now, right. Any time to make uh, a change is now. January 1st. January 1st. <laughs> That's right, it's coming up. <laughs> it's coming up. <laughs> New Year's resolutions, those are huge. Those are huge. Um, what can you do about the past? Nothing. Right, yeah. You can't change it, but to Cal's point, you learn and you move forward. Nothing, because it's, it's in the past. Uh, we all have this, all we have is this moment right here, right now. And Lord willing, in the future. Uh, so what are you going to do? What are you going to choose to do? The author states, get back to reading the Bible. Now, reinforcing God with our kids, our grandkids. Timothy had influence from his grandmother and his mom. Um, now. Return to a seriousness about my spiritual devotion and faith now. Start it now. Don't wait. <clears throat> start it now. When is a good time to start thinking about how you're going to influence future generations? Now. When is a good time to start putting the old man to death and putting on the new man? Now. I think I'm warding this out. But um, fathers, don't provoke your, your children to anger. Uh, bring them up with this instruction of the Lord. Responsibility, there's a lot of responsibility for fathers. Uh, there's kids need to see them growing in the knowledge of the Lord, being active in public service, worshiping the congregation. Sometimes dads are gone not because he chose to. Unfortunate circumstances happen, and, and their influence is gone. So, um, and this could happen for either spouse. So it's the burden of the other spouse to pick up the work and play the role of both. That's tough. But does the formula change? I, 
I don't think so. I think we still have to be a light. We have to be an example. We have to continue following God's word and, and reaching out and trying to relink uh, where we can if there are issues there. So, um, honest assessment, if I'm a dad, how am I doing? If, if, um, if, if I, I know I can do better, there's always oh, things we can do better. There are countless opportunities throughout the day to teach and talk to our kids about spiritual things. We have a pretty long commute to church. Good opportunity there to talk about what you, what you talk about in class, um, what was said in the sermon, uh, recap what, what the preacher said, what Kyle said, uh, some specifics about uh, what was said during the preparation of the Lord's Supper, songs that were led, uh, prayer is a great place to start. Uh, like Elijah, we talked about in James, uh, he, he had a nature like us, and he let me just read that for you. Therefore, confess your sins to one another and pray for another another that you may be healed. The prayer of a righteous person has a great power in its working. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed fervently that it might not rain. And for three years and six months, it did not rain on the earth. Then he prayed again, and heaven gave rain, and the earth bore its fruit. If we don't know what direction to go, we need some guidance. We talked about that several classes back. Sometimes we don't know where to start. Just start talking. You know, what I need to do, <laughs> guide me or, or help me or lead me in a way I, I need to go. James 4, verse 2, you desire and do not have, so you murder, you do not, you covet, you cannot obtain, so you fight and quarrel. You do not have because you do not ask. Our job as parents, grandparents, what is it? What are we, what are we to leave? <clears throat> to leave a legacy. What kind do we want to leave? <clears throat> one that fears God, one that, um, one that is there, like the prodigal son, a, a parent that's always there, waiting, ready. Um, that's the kind of legacy we want, we want to leave. <clears throat> we got about two minutes, or one minute. Anybody want to have any comments or thoughts before we wrap up? Mm -hmm. to write it down on a piece of paper or talk yep. like a sermon. And now, the new development of teaching children or teaching anybody as far as that goes is we've got machinery such as the PowerPoint. Mm -hmm. You can learn four and 15 minutes and you can learn in a week. Yeah. Yeah. And it just goes into one ear and out the other. Yeah. If you're thinking about anything but that. Right. There's a lot of resources we have today. Well, I guess I'm saying it's a different day in a different way. <laughs> different day, different way. Yes. Yes, sir. All right, everyone. Thank you so much. We'll take up with the questions there, Lord willing, Wednesday.